Hi guys, I'm back. So today we're going to have a look at the electric motor circuit for the new generator. Hold on. So somewhere inside this book I found a circuit that is quite interesting. Let me see if I can find it back. Yeah, right here. So here you can see it's unusual for the like simple John Bedini circuit. So it uses three transistors instead of uh, one and it uses four diodes as a rectifier instead of one. So uh, I don't have these MPS8099 transistors. And if you look online, you can see that those transistors are small signal transistors and that they don't dissipate that much power. So I decided to use what I like to use most of the time. And that is the BD139 transistor. Well, since we also need a PNP, I also have a BD1 uh for zero transistor right there um about the circuit so as you can see i modified it to the bd139 and the bd140 and i had these ultra fast 4007 uh, diodes laying around so i'll use those because i like them and the uh, resistors i don't have these exact matching resistor numbers so this will be uh 120 ohms and this is still going to be 2.2k this one is 3.3k i have it as well and this one i only have 22k so i'll be using this and um I thought it would be nice to put a red LED right here because then you can see when the trigger is going, uh, you know, when it's going. Or actually it's the opposite phase as you can see because it's in the different polarity uh, compared to the transistor. So. so there is going to be this circuit and a copy of the circuit but with power 2. So it's going to be attached to the second power coil right there. They're going to be using the same trigger coil. And there is going to be a large capacitor. I don't have this capacitor yet. And I also had to order more of these BD140s. But I still have one BD140 here. So I can make the circuit today. Um, uh, obviously I, I will use something else instead of the capacitor we'll just use the source like a power source so what about the rest well you can see most of it is still uh, in progress and it's uh, you know hopeful but still it's still in progress there's more of these by the way don't worry about it. Um, I found a way to cut this stuff easier. Uh, it's not recommended unless you know what you're doing. Um, so basically I used a jigsaw to move around it freely. So basically you, you cut long straight paths like this and then you sort of have the ability to uh, cut it round a bit. So. It's not perfectly round, but it's going to do just fine. And as you can see, that holds true because I already wound the other coil we left last time. Um, so this is the twisted coil. I will also make another one uh, which is not twisted. But for now, we're going to make this circuit and uh, how I'm going to do is because uh, I, I don't want to have a printed circuit board. I want the connections to be as close to each other as possible without any, uh, you know, going from one material to another. It's already bad enough that there has to be solder in between. Uh, why don't they just make these things? Why do I have to do it? Anyhow, let's do it anyway. Let's make this and let's have a look at uh, how it works on this coil. And yeah, well, obviously we don't have the rotor just yet. I mean, I have the magnets, they're interesting. But that's not gonna do it for now. Um, 
So I'll use this spin top I made, uh, I believe it was 2013 Pulse Motor build off. And I won those video goggles. This was great. Um, but so we can use it, you know, unpowered and then spin it above one of these coils and see if it is going to power up. So stay tuned. So here we are looking at the circuit that we just talked about. And you can see the three transistors in a row. And the resistors as described before. And uh, I, I put the bridge rectifier on the bottom. I'm not sure in the final design it's going to be like this. I'm pretty sure it's not going to be like this. And uh, yeah, I found a capacitor. It's not going to be the one that we're going to use. So it's a little bit smaller. Uh, but for now it will do. Because you know, you don't actually want the feedback. Uh, you know, the radiant energy into the wall uh, socket you know the the wall adapter i'm going to use a nine volt adapter i also use for my uh, guitar pedals um so oh yeah right so here's a mock-up of the sort of like cartridge i would like to call it so it's going to be underneath here with uh <coughs> Uh, three nuts and bolts and it will be stuck to here. Maybe it's going to be a little bit smaller. I don't know. We'll see and that will fit in here like a cartridge. So like standing up, right? You know eight of these coils around and in between there we can have the cartridge and on the other side We can have the capacitor. It will be a little bit smaller. So it will actually fit Maybe I'll wind the bridge rectifier around the you know circumference of the capacitor because you know uh, that's probably where we're gonna have the space left. And since these are just uh, loose diets, I can make them in any shape. So why not? So for now, I'll have to figure out in which of the you know polarities the positive or negative lead. Uh, it has to be in order for this magnet right here and the way it is facing down in order to be in attraction mode. So we're gonna have these uh, round waveform shapes from the magnet passing by the coil and uh, I'd like to call this the female shape and we're going to add this square wave to it and uh, together they're going to be uh, you know playing a role in making the attraction so we have a female and male shape and uh, attraction so that will make uh, sort of like a yin yang kind of situation <laughs> um, I don't know if you care about this but this was the thought behind making it an attraction motor okay so here you are and um... We are attaching the battery to the coil and as you can see I'm holding the spin top above the coil and when I tap it you can sort of see I'm pushed away so we're in repulsion mode here that would mean this uh, lead is now hooked up to the negative that should actually be the positive so here we are with the circuit hooked up and um, I tried it already. It was impossible to get the rotor to go fast enough to trigger it. So I attached a battery on top of the spin top. Um, let's turn it on. And hopefully we can do this carefully. Check the ammeter for action, right? Yeah, this is real difficult. <laughs> Let's try that again once more. So about a hundred million pairs. 
just from this magnet passing by here uh, doesn't oh come on it uh, doesn't really aid the rotation at this moment uh, but hopefully when the motor is completed and the rotor is on there we'll actually get some action so that's it for now thanks for watching